feeling maybe I should be drinking vodka instead. <laughs> Get it? Because it's a Russian, Russian movie. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and my ongoing quest to review every movie that Robin Williams has ever appeared in. Why do you, why do you always have to be in these? So today we are looking at 1984's film Moscow on the Hudson, directed by Paul, I'm probably saying this wrong, Mazursky, um, five-time Academy Award nominated director, also passed away in 2014, like probably two or three weeks before Robin did, which is a little bit crazy. This movie stars Robin Williams as Vladimir Ivanov, a musician who plays saxophone in the Soviet circus who defects while on a visit to New York City. This movie is fine. <laughs> it's it's sweet and nice and pleasant, but I don't know that there's anything all that spectacular about it. This film is based partially on the family history of the director. The film's protagonist was originally supposed to be a ballet dancer, but when the dancer they wanted to hire passed on the part, they rewrote the whole script to be a saxophonist. Robin spent five months studying Russian and the saxophone and growing a beard for this. According to his saxophone teacher, he achieved a level of proficiency in months that most students don't achieve for two years, which is just for the proof that when God gives out talent, you know, it goes, um, a lot of it will go into one person and then a lot of the rest of us get fucking chipped. Paul Robin was very proficient in speaking Russian. While they were filming in Munich, he found that his accent was not convincing to most of the Europeans that they were filming in the area with. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll play like a soundbite from the trailer. I already have a job. Okay, Mr. I. The first about 25 minutes of the film takes place while they're in Russia still before this circus departs for the U.S. The dialogue is all largely in Russian, and Robin's Russian language is fine and good, but um, once he's speaking English with his Russian accent, something is amiss. It just, it doesn't really sound quite right. It mostly just sounds like him. Robin was quoted saying he chose this work because he felt compelled to make strange films. He said, I think I chose them because I didn't want to do what was easy. In the mid to late 80s, Robin was largely being pushed by his management to choose more films that were going to become the big star vehicle for him. And so far, the closest we have come is Popeye, and we're, we're probably like five or six films away from the ones that will actually turn him into a star. We're gonna get through some shit here in a couple of weeks. The movie takes 41 minutes to get to the part where uh, Robin's character actually defects in the middle of a Bloomingdale's. A lot of it was very slow and slow moving and it was just kind of events of life. Uh, I mean, obviously there's stakes because he could be kidnapped by KGB, but it, you just kind of, I didn't feel that sense of urgency throughout most of the movie. I just felt like I was kind of going on a slow, like, like a lazy river ride, like watching the events of this man's life after he moves to New York. I don't know. I, I think I was expecting this to be more like comical hijinks, like yuck, yuck, yuck. This man can't decide on what coffee he wants in a grocery store because he's only used to waiting in three hour long lines for coffee. Side note. I don't know if I'm just dumb or if I never learned this in school, but I didn't know that people in Russia, like, into the early 90s were waiting in hour-long lines for shoes and toilet paper and that it was, like, this impressive. I... I really didn't know any of that. So I did have a hard time kind of getting into the initial plot of the movie because I didn't really understand what the circumstances were. And every other Russian character is played by a Russian actor. And, the, you know, there's an Italian actress as the romantic lead and a, a black actor as the side character. So this is like a cool, diverse cast. It would be a lot cooler if it wasn't the 80s and there weren't. The Bloomingdale scene is nothing but racism and homophobic jokes just the whole time for like 15 straight minutes. The whole movie isn't like that. The, the movie on the whole is very sweet, but that scene where they get most of the gags, they were really just chipping away at those stereotypes. Um, but once it gets going, once Robin's character has 
defected, once he moves to New York, once he's living the life and doing the hustle and trying to make it work with this Italian girlfriend, it's 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 fun. As far as the side characters go, the one that I cared about the most is not in the movie for very long. Vlad lives in an apartment in Russia with all of his family. His grandfather was a kind of like a fuck the government comedian. He's a cool guy, barely in the movie. His best friend in the circus is a clown who whose idea it is to defect and he wants to so bad and then once they get to New York he actually chickens out and can't do it. I cared about him a lot. He's not in the movie very long. The girlfriend is fine, the security guard who he ends up living with is fine, their relationships are both good, I just didn't, I didn't care about what they wanted as much. Partially, can you please stop? I think that's partially because their, their wants and motivations aren't introduced as early into the film. Like, with 20 minutes left in the movie we find out that the security guard that he's been friends with has a son. And it's kind of just, it's, he goes and sees the sun and then he comes back and you don't find anything out about that. All of the moments that are supposed to be sh heartfelt and showing of genuine friendship or mourning or struggle or fuck the government, like all of those moments are very well done and heartfelt. The press for this movie was generally positive and it was a moderate financial success, but there were some critics who said that the film sort of seemed unfinished and that it had these great characters in it that it sort of didn't know what to do with and I think that's largely how I feel like I do agree with that that there are these characters that Vlad especially is very well crafted as a protagonist and he has motivation and intriguing things about him that's just not explored very well or it's not really explored until like the last 20 minutes of the movie and the movie is two hours but the more positive reviews did say that the film had most engaging characters and that robin was securely grounded and extraordinarily touching nobody really had anything negative to say about his accent i guess other than europeans which that tracks another interesting fact about this movie there was a lawsuit with the um one of the original main runs of the poster by an artist named Saul Steinberg who drew this famous cover for The New Yorker. He claimed that it infringed upon his drawing, which, yeah, kind of, uh, and he did win the case for that. This movie I don't think came and went as fast as the survivors did. When I've mentioned this one to people, they have at least heard the name. Again, I, <laughs> I feel bad for liking the survivors more than this. But it is very sweet. I mean, you'll finish the movie and feel good. You'll probably want to make some hot chocolate or something, or drink some vodka. There is so much sipping of neat vodka in this movie. <laughs> and as a person who went through a neat vodka phase in college when I just wanted to be drunk constantly, I just can't see myself wrapped in a sweater with my Italian girlfriend, like, drinking neat vodka. 2020 has been the year that we've really found out that America is absolutely far from the greatest country in the world and we might be one of the worst. And this movie is so focused on all of these people from different minority backgrounds pledging their whole lives to the U.S., which I know that that's, like, the dream and, and was for a lot of people and probably still is, but it's just kind of, like, uncomfy in a modern environment. I don't know. I I would say check it out if you're interested, if you want to watch something that's just kind of sweet and easy, or if you want to if you want to judge for yourself if Robin's Russian accent is good or not. Um, it is available to rent on Prime, YouTube, Vudu, and iTunes. I'm really hoping soon I can get back into ones that are available on streaming services that are more accessible. If you're watching these videos, I, they've been doing moderately well recently, so thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me to know that at least a handful of people out there care about this project and what I'm doing. If you're watching this though and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That would be really cool if you did that. Next week we will be talking about a film I have literally never heard of before. It is called The Best of Times. It's an athletic rivalry comedy with Kurt Russell. And that sounds like the opposite of something that I will enjoy. So, um, you know, tune in to see me suffer.